In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a click to reveal that uses video rather than pictures or text. So the story behind this interaction is that a client of mine reached out to me and asked how to do this. And I thought about it for a bit. And the reason I've probably never tried this is I've always thought that video would be too large to have multi-state video, if you will, uh, which is how I typically do a click to reveal. Okay, so I've created a whole bunch of smart shapes for this click to reveal. And in this example, we're going to be using a bunch of videos that are appropriate for maybe preschool uh, children just to learn the alphabet and see some uh, images that relate to each letter of the alphabet. And of course, with 26 letters of the alphabet, we've got 26 videos. I never thought to do this before because I always thought that videos would be too intense. But these are short videos. And of course, I would recommend relatively short videos in this case here. I've already imported them into my library, as you can see. And I've already set up a series of shapes used as buttons. And these shapes used as buttons have multiple states already. So there's the rollover and the down state. So you'll see that when you press a letter, when you roll over it, you'll see it turn to white. When you press it down, it becomes a darker blue. But once you've pressed any of these, I've added a visited state to all of them just so that the children can see which buttons they've already pressed and can focus only on the buttons that are remaining. So let's exit from that state here. Let's first of all add our first video. Now, this is going to be a multi-state video. So we're going to start with the letter A. And if we go to our library here, we can find the letter A in the library. And I can just drag that onto my canvas. Now, you might think slide video might be a good choice because, uh, you know, for a number of different reasons, like it includes the ability to uh, have closed captioning. But in this case, because you can only have one slide video per slide, you're going to want to choose event video. So that's what I'm going to do in this case here. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Now our first video, these videos are rather large. They're very short though, so I'm not too worried about uh, overtaxing the system here. And they're relatively small in size, but I do need to resize them obviously. So I'm going to select the video. I'm going to go to the Properties Inspector. And we're going to go to options and I'll be making some other changes as well. But first thing we need to do is get it sized appropriately here. Um, I think about three pixels from the top and I'm going to right click on it and align it horizontally to the center here. Let's go to the style tab for this video. First thing I don't want is this playback controls. I just want it to play automatically. So I'm going to turn off the skin, which obviously will gray out, but auto select auto play. And uh, you have another choice as well. And that's going to be related to looping. Now I'm going to uncheck uh, pause slide till end of video. Uh, I don't think this is necessary for this type of interaction, but Certainly there are other cases where event video, you'd want to stay on the slide till the video finished. So I'm going to uncheck check that. And here's the choice part. So when I play this video, when I display it, it will play for the 15 seconds or so that it's on screen. And then, you know, it will just stop and wait for the children to press another button. If I don't want that, if I want it to just keep playing forever and ever and ever, I can choose loop. And this is something you need to decide at this point, because as I add all the multi-state videos in, they're going to inherit whatever I choose for the normal state here. So I'm going to choose loop in this case, because these are videos that don't have sound and I want to keep the animation going. So loop, I think is an appropriate choice here. So let's go back to the properties inspector. And uh, at this point now we can go into state view or alternatively you can click on the plus icon to add a new state. 
and we're going to do letter B as an example. And to change which video is played, we're just going to click on the folder icon and you could import the video if you wish, but it's already in your library. So you just need to find the appropriate video. And then of course you can click OK. There is a little glitch here. It's still showing the letter A of the preview of that, but that's OK. We're just going to resize it back to the other size we had before. And now I'm going to go ahead and do letter C and click OK. So once again, I will go to the style tab, click on the folder icon, and we'll find, uh, in this case here, letter C. Click OK. So I, I think you guys get the idea here. This is what we're doing at this point here. Now, how are we going to get this to work? Well, I think the default for this video object is to not be visible in output. So when you arrive on the screen, you'll just see the keyboard and the kids can start pressing keys. So I'm going to hide the video object and I'm going to write a little advanced action. So this advanced action will be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to call it letter underscore press. And there's two things we're going to do here. We're going to, first of all, show our video object and we're going to change its state to uh, we'll use normal for an example here. And you would create an advanced action for all 26 buttons. No, he won't. Of course not. There's an easier way to do that. Uh, you could, but that's very time consuming. Instead, what I would do is save this as a shared action. And a shared action is kind of like a fill in the blank advanced action. So first of all, we just need to write a description for the two parameters that we've just included in our original advanced action. The first one, I'm just going to write video object. So the video object goes there. Uh, and then of course, we're going to say the state of the video object. I can't do brackets here, but if I would, I'd just say, um, you know, letter of the alphabet. Okay, and I hit save and that's done. So what I can do, I've only done a couple of letters, A, B, C. I'll show you the completed project when we're done. But what I'm going to do is select the letter A here, go to the actions tab. And instead of go to next slide or continue or whatever it is by default, we're going to execute shared actions automatically selects letter press for us. But if I had more than one shared action, I would select it from this drop down list. And we're going to do two things. We're going to identify that we're working with the video object, which you can just type in and it will find it. And for letter A, we're going to go to the normal state. Click save. And I'm going to repeat this process for all the letters of the alphabet here. Execute shared actions, letter press, press the parameters icon. And we will select letter B. And I'll keep repeating this process until I have it all completed as I do here. So let's preview this now and see how it works. So I'll preview this in HTML5 in browser. Incidentally, I set up keyboard shortcuts for all those buttons. So I can literally just type using my keyboard on the screen here. So this comes up, I press A and there's the A video and it shows A for ants, which makes sense. And because I chose loop, once we get to the end of this video, which is coming up shortly, it will start all over again and just keep animating until, of course, the cows come home. So now if I press the letter B, it switches to B for birds, C for cat, D for, well, you guessed it, dog, E, 
And by using videos instead of something more static, we've turned this into a fun game for children. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.